let's talk about the new crankshot sculpt tool that we include in the version 2.6.1. So here I have this um, this model. I'm just gonna save a version, and it's just fresh build. And I have opened my tool here, my crankshot sculpt. Uh, to open it, we go to animation tools and then crankshot sculpt. So this is the shutter sculpting tool, and it's the most simple shot sculpt tool that I I can imagine. Basically, this is the first incarnation. Later on, future versions will have more options that uh, was not done for this version. But this is the minimum viable tool, let's say. And this tool, just a warning here, probably will work only from 2017 uh, version and later. So I don't know, 2016, if it will work and 2016.5 maybe if I don't remember exactly when the um, um, what is this uh, the shape editor was um, was added I'm not sure maybe it's 2016 um, but yeah be, be aware that 2015 for sure will not work anyway so um, I'm just gonna keep this like there just for the moment so later we will check what is going on under the hood so basically this tool have um, two sections the first section is to uh, create the sculpt layers and the sculpt layers are just groups of objects that uh, will be handled as one when we sculpt the the the, um, the frame on the on the animation so I'm gonna create here something super super basic and um, course my curves are by default just gonna put this okay so I have this super simple animation uh, maybe I should make something better or around here it's very very basic okay so this um, works same this way so first I'm just gonna select the objects that I want to include in the this layer so in this case it's going to be the arm and the t-shirt so I create the layer here and I call this arm for instance so it's going to create a crank layer and a current layer is represented on the onliner uh, with this uh, transform node that basically holds the information that cranks need to trigger all the uh, all the data and also keep track of the connections and here we will see that it pops all the frames so you can animate all at once here so it's, it's just a holder for the information it's nothing else so you don't you can translate this or print it anywhere if you want but yeah, i recommend that you just keep it here and the name it's with the crank layer extension but it's a regular uh, transform okay so i have this okay now that i have my layer here if i click on the layer it's gonna select this and i can add a skull frame so before to go to these call frames, we have to review this information here. So we have EC in, pre hold, post hold, and EC out. So I'm just gonna pull here my board and let's check what means this. So we have the EC in, a pre hold, the post hold. I'm just gonna and the is out just no way. so basically it says okay this is my frame here whatever is it in this case it's uh, 18 so this is my current time it's 18 so from this I know the my current time is gonna be my shot is copied it's gonna be to one so this is one and this is zero and of course, if I set uh, not auto key, it's gonna set this the value to one, but it's not gonna keyframe anything. So it's auto key, and then pre hold pre hold it's zero in this case. So if I put one, means it's gonna take one frame. This is my let's say timeline. So this is the eighteen and seventeen, and sixteen, and so on. And here same thing. So nineteen, twenty, and this direction, this direction. And my frames here, bah, 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 like this. Okay, so um, I have my current frame. We say it's 18, and we have one pre-hold, two 
post hold two is in uh, is out and one is in so basically what it's gonna do is one frame here holding one frame to go down in linear what well, this is it's gonna be zero so here oh what zero is there well, I did it right okay so this is zero sorry this point here and for the post hold it's gonna be two so it's one frame here 19 two frames and then two to go down so this is gonna be 22 so it's going down there so this is how it's gonna work and uh, here is really it's not going to to create any keyframes so it's gonna create only um, it did this also it's not gonna be created but anyway so let's check this so I say like one one two two so one one three and two two whoops two and I'm just gonna add sculpt frame here so add the sculpt so what it does it's automatically uh, activates the sculpting in the shape editor for each of the uh, elements so if we check here we have a bunch of plane shapes from the rig so here we have the arms plane shape uh, so let's check this the crank and it's the frame 18 18 and it has animation and this animation is connected to connect it to what to the layer so here we have the layer with the value and if we check the animation here you can see yeah this is the keyframe here sorry so this one and one down and two and two so it's 22 20 17 and 16 so that's what we expected there we can add more than one uh, sc uh, skull frame for each frame so if I add another one it's gonna create another layer with um, sorry another frame on top so it's gonna with the same keys but if I keep the EC out to zero in zero so if I add another one and of course this is gonna show me everything now so just select this one and select the other one so we, I have version one here so because it's zero EC out is out sorry um, it's gonna hold here forever so it's not gonna bring down the parameter same thing if it's is out is in or whatever so if I keep this all to zero and I add another one again it changes the selection so if you click here again if you don't want to go to the um, outliner so it's only keyframing or current value to one that's it so we need to handle this by hand how we handle by hand well as I said this is a regular transform with these exposed uh, channels so you can animate regular your keyframes here so but okay so now we have this keyframes and you can see these sets to edit these ones and these um, blend shapes uh, nodes are in the tangent space that's important tangent space so it's green it's not oops it's not this orange means it's gonna work in the tangent space on the transformation so it sometimes is stable but in sometimes it because it's based on the underlying deformation you may find some uh, funky uh, points moving especially if you stand more than one frame your your shot uh, your uh, sh school frame okay so <clears throat> good so I have this and let's say my edit now it's on the this one so basically I can um, I can right click here and select members and because I know it's in edit mode by default it's selected but I change the selection so um, I can grab my um, my tool in this case I'm I'm grabbing my uh, oops, sculpting tool and I'm just going to grab tool and I'm just can start and I think in my preference for this tool um, I have turned off my wireframe but it should be by default like this so I can do my my shot skull there and it's working and I can grab two objects or more at the same time that's the, the most important part of the shot sculpting is that you can handle several objects at the same time maybe you work with uh, other techniques like a wrap deformer with a single object things like that that's also supported but yeah that's it so the only thing to 
take into account here is that by default, um, the last edit frame, uh, or it's called frame, let's say, to make a differentiation between the current frames and this called frame target thing, is that it remains in edit mode. So in order to to uh, consolidate that and avoid crashing, because I found sometimes scrolling this back and forward with this edit, may crash, right click here, and you can set all the layers to edit off. So basically what is gonna consolidate and here the, the information that you have here, like uh, you edit, editing this, um, is gonna disappear. So right now we have this animation with this shot scope. So you can see here it's holding. And if I go here, click here, oh my, so I can edit this one and it can animate. So regular, you can go here, this frame now and put it there. So in case selected and go here and maybe pull it down also and case selected so this is up to you how you do it oops it's there uh, so i have here the funky animation and probably this is again i'm sorry for that um it's my um my default configuration i have all everything to step it yeah that's me it's not the tool itself so you have this shutter called maybe that you can make a smear frame you can make a correction and intersection and close simulation it's up to you how to use it, the tool but this is how it works and in terms of um how it uh structures this on the uh, operator stack it's basically it creates post uh blend shape nodes after your skin so you can see here it's this node here and it's a uh, after the skin cluster and the regular blend shape node. So um, it's using just the regular Maya tools, absolutely nothing special here. The only thing is how it handles this. So it's just creating this node and this node plugs all the blend shapes on the current layer and that's it. So for the moment it doesn't support to delete uh, frames. So if you don't like one frame and uh, of course you can do undo, that's gonna be working, but if you've been working for a while and then you don't wanna just just remove the animation, so just select your, your crank here, not on the node, because you delete the, you break the, the rig that it builds for you. But you can um, delete select at this and just keep it to zero and just add a new one, it's gonna be version up in the same frame, so that's it. So for the moment it doesn't support to, to delete um, anything, so. That's something I should know. Same thing, uh, I, I I didn't provide yet anything to delete the layer, so just keep your envelope layer to zero and add another layer. Okay, so can you do more than uh, also adding objects? If you want to create another layer with more objects, you can do it, even including the objects on another layer. So this is uh, for creating, so this is gonna be the second layer. But you cannot, um, I mean, I don't support to delete clean the layers or anything. So you bear in mind, this is a very simple tool. So that's it. Okay, so other things that you can do. So let's say I have my second layer here and um, I'm just gonna keep, you see, in, in you see, oh, like this, is, this is this is the default configuration. It's gonna be one frame. So select for you. So go to my tool and um, start editing stuff, whatever I decide here. Uh, I think it's with shift, no, with control, the move from the normal. Okay, so I have this terrible destroying thing here. And I just finished the editing. So now it's, um, if I check in the shape editor, it's not nothing editing. And I want to edit again this, uh, let's say I'm in the frame there and for any reason, I don't know, I, I'm just here and I want to edit again this frame. So I just select my um, my layer, sometimes you need to refresh like this or go here, select here in the channel box and then edit select sculpt layer or oh, frame, sorry. So it's gonna go to your uh, timeline to the frame that it's in the name and it's gonna select the objects for you so you can edit again and I don't have grab, I have push. So I can edit again. And of course this one includes the the body here. When I finish, turn off all the edits. So it's gonna have this information popping in the in view view. So you have this frame there, pop, 
it's one and this is correct because it's set zero zero and one one so it's basically one on one frame only that have this obviously if you want to edit again you can just select this go to your familiar editor for animation that is the graph editor set another time for this and now it's gonna slowly this should be working uh, with reference models that will add uh, post the, the format mesh it should be working with uh, reference and also with alambic files so if you catch you load in a cache file it's gonna work the same way and as you can see you can stack this in a very handy way and you can add other stuff one last thing and this is kind of a tip um, I think I don't forget anything here is the um, Sometimes it's nice when you are in the, let's say, if my character is in the absolute neutral pose, thing like that. So after adding my layers, I can come here and take advantage of the delta mesh. So now I have a delta mesh on top of each of these layers. So when I animate, so here, you see my, my delta mesh, oops. Oh, come on, this is a Wacom thing click okay so it's gonna make it smooth on top of your uh, brushing thing so now because I have the layer so I can come here add another sculpt so it's same oops same thing grab my grab tool in this case okay and now it's nice that's my get this stuck Let's use the mouse. No, the tool is stuck there. Maybe it's because the delta mesh, I don't know. But yeah, you can add it at the end of the, oops, of the, um, now like this, evaluation thing. And now in, the, um, let me check one thing. Yeah, it was in edit. So yeah, there's it. So now you have this, it's way smoother than like this. But it's just something, I mean, an extra tip here. So maybe help you to keep under control some of the deformations with that. And here I say <laughs> animation is very funky right now. Just a jump there. Oh yeah, that's, um, that's how it works. Under under the hood, it's creating just simple uh, plane shapes nodes in the post uh, deformation with uh, a tangent space plane shapes target so that's it um, the tool as you can see it's very simple grill layers school frames right click we have some extra options like select the members and turn off uh, all the edits for each of the layers or all the layers and this is just a simple um, oh, search box. box search box that it's just failing right now I oh, know I don't know what it was a little error there but now not I will check that but you can see um, yeah that's it okay so that's that's all for this tool and I hope uh, it's useful for you okay see you in the next video bye bye